Chapter 8, Lesson 2, Function Rules. A sequence is a list of numbers in a specific order. Each number in the list is called a term of the sequence. Arithmetic sequences can be found by adding or subtracting the same number to the previous term. Here are some examples. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11 is an example of an arithmetic term because you can add 2 to get to the next term. 5, 4.5, 4, 3.5, 3, 2.5, and so on is also an example of an arithmetic term because you can subtract by 0 0.5 to get to the next term. Because they are adding and subtracting, they are arithmetic. Geometric sequences can be found by multiplying or dividing the same number to the previous term. Here are some examples of geometric sequences. 1, 5, 25, 125, 625, and so on is geometric because you have to multiply by 5 to get to the next term. 80, 40, 20, 10, 5, and so on has to be divided by 2 to get to the next term. So these are both examples of geometric. Example. Show the relationship between the terms in the sequence, 7, 14, 21, 28, and so on. Then find the next three terms. So, to get from 7 to 14, and then 14 to 21, 21 to 28, I notice that it's being increased by 7 each time. Because it's adding or subtracting, this is an arithmetic sequence that increases by plus 7. So to find the next three terms, we would have to then do 28 plus 7 to find the next term, which is 35, and then plus 7 again to find the next term, which is 42, and then plus 7 again to find the next term, which is 49. Show the relationship between the terms in the sequence 2, 4, 8, 16, then find the next three terms. So to get from 2 to 4, 4 to 8, and 8 to 16, they're each times 2. So this is a geometric sequence because it involves multiplication or division. And you have to multiply by 2 to get to the next term. So to find the next three terms, we have to take our last term, 16, and multiply it by 2. So the next term would be 32. Then we have to multiply by 2 again to get our next term, which is 64, and multiply by 2 again to get 128. Try these yourself to check for understanding. Example 3. Describe the value of each term, so the value of term, as a function of its position. Write the function rule, then find the value of the tenth term. So we want to notice a pattern between our position to the value of term for each part of the table. From 1 to 3, 2 to 6, 
3 to 9, 4 to 12, I notice that they're all times 3, the number on top, to get to the number on bottom. So if we wanted to write a general function rule, we would use this variable n. What would we have to do to n to find the value of the term? We would have to multiply it by 3. So we can write this as 3n. So our function rule becomes 3n. We can describe this by saying each value of term is 3 times the position, so the function rule is 3n. If we want to find the value of the 10th term, we're going to represent n as 10 and solve it using our function rule 3n. So we're going to take 10 and plug it in for n. 3 times n gives us 30. So the 10th term has a value of 30. Example 4. Describe the value of each term as a function of its position. Write the function rule, then find the value of the 10th term. So again, we want to notice a pattern between each position and the value of term. So I notice from 3 to 7, we're adding 4. And from 4 to 8, we're adding 4. From 5 to 9, plus 4. And from 6 to 10, plus 4. So now if we use the variable n, we need to add 4 to n to get the value of term. So we can write this as n plus 4. We can describe this as each value of term is 4 more than the position, so our function rule is n plus 4. So now to find the value of the 10th term, we're going to make n equal to 10, and we're going to use our function rule n plus 4 to see what the value of it is going to be. So we're going to plug in 10 for n, which gives us 10 plus 4, so the value of the 10th term is going to be 14. Example 5. The table shows the number of necklaces Brie can make based on the number of hours she works. Write a function rule to find the number of necklaces she can make in x hours. So first, let's look for a pattern between our input to our output. So to get from an input of 1 to an output of 5, we could add 4 or we can multiply by 5. 1 plus 4 would give us 5 and 1 times 5 would also give us 5. So we need to see which one of these rules work for every input and output. So if we did 2 plus 4, that gives us 6 and doesn't give us 7. So that doesn't work. And if we did 2 times 5, that gives us 10 and doesn't give us 7. So neither of those rules work. So because there is no pattern that works between our input and output values, we need to look at any patterns between the output values. So to get from 5 to 7, it's plus 2. And then to get from 7 to 9 is also plus 2. So because we have a pattern of adding 2, we're going to use that positive 2, and that's going to become part of our function rule. And we're going to have 2x. So the difference between the output values is always used in multiplication with your variable when finding your function rule. But we might need to add more. So if we had a function rule of 2x, and if our first x is 1, if we plugged in 2 times 1, that would only give us 2. And if we plugged in 2 times 2, this would give us 4. 2 times 3, that would give us 6. So then we have 2x down here. So now to get from 2 to 5, we would need to then add 3 after multiplying it with 2. And that would give us 5. To get from 4 to 7, we would also need to add 3. And that would give us 7. To get to 6, we can also add 3. So for every input to get to our output, it works if we do 2x plus 3 which will always give us our output. So in this case, our function rule would be 2x plus 3. Example 6. The table shows the fee for overdue books at a library based on the number of weeks the book is overdue. 
write a function rule to find the fee for a book that is X weeks overdue. So first we want to look for a pattern from our input to our output. So for, to get from an input of 1 to an output of 1, we'd need to either add 0 or multiply by 1. And we need to see if any of these rules work for every input-output value. So let's try 2. If we did 2 plus 0, that wouldn't give us 4. And if we did 2 times 1, that would give us 2 and also not 4. So that means we need to look at our difference in output values. So the difference between our output values is adding 3. So we use this number 3 and we multiply it with our variable x to start our function rule. So if we had 3 times x, that would give us 3 times 1, which is 3, 3 times 2, which is 6, 3 times 3, which is 9, 3 times 4, which is 12, and in this case, 3x. We don't yet have our output values by just multiplying each input value by 3. So from there, then we're going to need to subtract 2 to get to 1. And if that works for all of them, then that becomes our function rule. 3 minus 2 gives us 1, 6 minus 2 gives us 4, 9 minus 2 gives us 7, and 12 minus 2 gives us 10. So that means our function rule is 3x minus 2. And that works for every input value and it gives us every output value. To check for understanding, pause the video here and try this one yourself. 